Hello and welcome back to another Warlords of Draenor video. So today we're going to be covering Ashran once again. Yes, it has been a while, but the good news is that Blizzard have actually implemented a few updates. Now, I am not saying that I'm 100% cool with Ashran or anything like that. I think these are definitely great updates. They, they definitely help out, though there's still one or two inherent problems as I covered in my previous video. But anyway, let's just talk about what Blizzard have added. So the very first thing is that they have revamped the way that the capture points used to work. Now, the strange thing about how Ashran used to be is that you could play there for an hour and not really notice that there's a tug of war going on. I mean, you'd see players fighting, but there are also objectives and towers and areas, and you'd never really notice them because, frankly, they like the battle never kept pace with the objectives and it was all very bizarre. Basically, you could just kind of rush ahead, you know, through the lane, and it wouldn't really reflect that in the progress. So, in order to help that, they've implemented a few really cool changes, and the first one is with capture points. So, previously, the way that it used to work was, in fact, hyper-contrived. I don't think it made much sense. So, here's what Blizzard said. Um, the, yeah, the control point at each node within the Road of Glory will despawn the higher-level guards, um, and then killing players and the low-level guards will determine who captures the node. Okay, so basically, inside every single one of these nodes, or these capture points, like these kind of area things, there was a node that you could capture. Now, if you captured that node, it would mean that the really powerful elite guards wouldn't spawn. Now, these elite guards will patrol around the place, they're, you know, knights, etc., and they're quite damaging. However, capturing that point wouldn't really get you the whole part of the map. What you would then need to do is kill players and the weak guards, which would capture you the place as a whole. It just was super contrived, so what they've done is they've changed it. Basically, now what you need to do is just, it's a zone of control. So, if you capture a tower by having all your dudes in the tower, and you kill the enemy dudes and make them retreat from the tower, then guess what? The tower is going to be yours. Now, I have played for about an hour of Ashran testing out this new feature, just spending time in the lane. And what I will say is that you actually notice what's going on in the battle now, and that's really, really cool. And I'm very happy to see this change. It actually... I think it, it does make you realize what's going on in the lane, and the nice thing about that is that it adds a little bit more purpose into the actual laning gameplay, and that's one of the things that I said Ashran lacked. So, while it doesn't fix the problem completely in terms of it feeling like it lacks purpose, it does at least help by giving you a short-term objective to aim for. So that's really cool. Now, they've also done another thing with the Road of Glory. Inside the towers that are basically right before the Alliance or Horde staging ground, they have placed these mages, one mage per tower, and the mages are actually rather strong. Now, these mages will do a variety of abilities that have not been fully tuned yet, but essentially, what the enemy team can do is they can go and kill these mages, which will make capturing that tower area a little bit easier. According to Chris Kalecki on the, I'm on the blue post that he made, they are basically, you know, the mages are... They're optional, but ignoring them will be rather tricky, because they'll probably be raining down some sort of death, doom, and destruction upon you. So yeah, you'll want to kill your enemy mage if you're trying to capture their tower. Now, killing the mage itself will, and this is great, give you some rewards. Once again, they're adding more rewards into the central lane, so they are making small little changes that actually have a rather important effect. I guess that makes some pretty big changes, but yeah. I think that's really, really cool. Um, now, as I said, they still have to tune the mages and get all that stuff right, so I won't really be able to tell you exactly what's going on with the mages for um, for a while. Now, the final thing that he talked about was storming the enemy base. So, right now, currently on the beta, the final encounter with the enemy's commander isn't really implemented, but they are going to have that soon enough. But once you kill your enemy's faction leader, what will happen is is that you'll be able to pillage their base. Now, inside the base, you will find a whole bunch of chests. And this is pretty cool, because those chests are locked. Where do you get the keys? You get them off dead players. So you kill the enemy players, and find the keys from various places, then put the keys in the chests, and you get some sweet loot, which is very cool. And they've also put a griffin or wervin, um, or welvin, wervin, whatever, whatever the hell those things are, um, in the base, so that you can essentially get back to your own base really quickly. Now, this is 
Really good in that it is convenient, you don't have to run all the way back home, but it also means that you can basically stay in the enemy base till the very last second. If you're not aware, the way it works is that once you storm their base and defeat them, you've got maybe, I forget exactly, but let's just say a 10 minute period to, to loot the base, and after that 10 minutes, a whole bunch of elite guards spawn, and basically, you'll get cleared out of their base. So, giving you that griffin or wervin to get back home on is really cool. Another great thing that it does is it incentivizes the team who is currently pillaging the base to get back to their own base very quickly. What this essentially does is it resets the board at Ashran, and that's very effective. So, that's definitely a good thing. Now, they are the, the sort of main things that they've changed. There are a few more updates here in his blue post, by the way, so I'll just mention what they are. So they said that the hidden buffs that are just lying around Ashran are a little bit too strong, and they're going to be toning them down in terms of their duration, rarity, and things like that. For an example, I had one on my Death Knight, which gave me... I think I had a, a shield that was at one point shielding me for like 400,000 health. So it was basically doubling my health pool, and it kept on regenerating very quick, so it was totally overpowered. Another thing that they're fixing up is that they are rebalancing the objectives that are earned with the artifact fragments. So summoning Cronus or Fangarel, who are the like big ancient dudes, is going to take a little bit more time, but the warlock portals and mage gateways are actually going to be a little bit easier to get. And also on the topic of Cronus and Fangarel, they have finally got some abilities added. So for an example, when I was fighting Cronus, he kept on like stamping on the floor and making these big spikes come up, so they, they were actually adding some mechanics in there. I'd say that they could still be a little bit more powerful, perhaps, um, but that could just be because we're all running around an item level 690 gear, so I suppose they wouldn't seem too scary to us. So the next thing that Chris talked about was the class books, and uh, if you don't know, there are these books which you can get. They're a bit like spell books from Vanilla WoW in a way, but what they do is they will enhance one of your abilities. So for an example, on my Hunter, I got one which decreased my... And the duration of disengaged like five seconds or something. Now they're redoing a few books, including the Shaman one. They're adding a new Druid book, and they're making the Flight Form book for Druids uh, legendary. I don't know exactly what the Flight Form book does. I think it unlocks Flight Form either permanently or just for a little bit of time in Ashran. And um, they're also redesigning the DK and Warlock class books. They're also making it so that the books only come from the bosses, which are lying around outside. Um, Ashran, if you don't know what that means, outside, well, not outside Ashran, outside the main lane. Um, outside the main lane, there are actually some bosses. There's one which is a giant Gron guy, and yeah, so they're going to drop the class books. This will give you another reason to go and do those encounters, and they said that they are intending those counters um, to be for three to five players. So there you go. And he's also said that they are changing up the zone events just a little bit so that the major point of interest events will actually give you a few minutes warning before they begin. I think this is really good because if everyone in Ashran, both Horde and Alliance, knows that position X is going to be active in three minutes, then it's going to stimulate combat in that area as both factions try to wrestle control for when the point of interest actually activates. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing that he said is that they do have a few future changes planned. So he said that there is going to be a pass on abilities, health, and damage, and that there's also going to be some more polishing for Cronus and Fangarel's abilities, um, and they're also going to be doing a better job of patrolling the lane. He also said that the um, Quartermaster and Honor slash conquest, uh, conquest vendors are not complete. He also said that the Mage and Warlock portal slash gateway guardians are going to be tuned, and that they're actually going to get a reward. That's really cool. Again, the more things that they add rewards for, the better in my opinion, because it's just going to be incentivizing people to go um, all over the place and do things. Um, he also said that rescuing prisoner NPCs will give you a reward. If you don't know, by the way, there's a prison, and that's pretty cool. You can break out your friendly NPCs and perhaps even some of your friendly players who've been locked in there by pesky paladins. Um, yeah, you'll get a reward for doing that. And finally, he said that they're going to be just tuning up some of the drops and loot tables for the various mobs you'll find around Ashran. So there you go, that is basically what they have been doing in Ashran. I think this is a very good upgrade. Do I think it is enough to completely fix some of the problems that I have with Ashran, as outlined in my top 5 um, problems with Ashran video? Uh, no. I, I still think that Zerg gameplay isn't the most fun. I still think that they could have done some things that are slightly cooler. But I think that this is absolutely a very good step in the right direction. You see, one of the great things about Ashran, or at least 
one of the things that people thought would be great is how it would be sort of like Alteric Valley. Well, you know what, now that they're adding in the mages at the two towers, and now that they're actually making the capture points matter a bit more, we're getting to that stage where at least there's going to be a pretty cool tug of war with the towers going on. Frankly though, I would not mind if Ashran was just a little bit bigger. That's one thing that I would certainly like, because as I said in that Top 5 Problems video, it does take about 40 seconds to cross Ashran, and I just think that's a little bit too fast. But anyway, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're in the beta, let me know what you currently think of Ashran, and if you're not in the beta, then what do you think you'd like to see in Ashran? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, that's it for me, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.